In this video, we'll look at CNC milling a small topographic card holder. We'll start by downloading the two files provided in the worksheet. And then we can open the, the topographic card holder file in Fusion 360. So we, before we go too far, we'll, we'll need to save our file and make a small change to the, our user profile. Um, I'm going to save this in a tutorials folder that I made earlier. And minimize the data panel. If you come up to the right hand corner and right click on your profile, um, we can come down to preferences. And the manufacturing tab, we'll need to enable cloud libraries if it's not already enabled. So we'll apply that, okay. And this will allow us to, um, to use our manufacturing tools um, from anywhere, not just the local computer that we make this on. Um, so now I will go to the workspace tab and come down to manufacture. And in manufacture, the first thing we need to do is create a new setup. So go to setup, new setup. And in the setup, we define the material size that's going to be cut and we define the material orientation relative to the router. So the face that we'll be machining is this top face and all the operations will come down um, vertically in this current Z direction. Um, so our, our, our workspace coordinate uh, aligns with our, with our machining space coordinate at the moment. Um, if for some reason it does not, we can modify that in this uh, work coordinate system tab and we can redefine our Z plane um, based by, by using either an edge of the part or the, the part origin. Um, the next thing to do is to check our um, starting point location. So at the moment, our stock point location is in the center of the part. Um, this can be challenging to locate on the physical machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and select box point. Um, and if you notice above the stock point origin, we have the option to, to select from the, the either the model origin, um, a selected point or a, a model point instead of the stock point. Um, it certainly makes more sense to touch off from a stock point because that's what we'll have access to in the real world. Um, so I'm going to move this over to a left-hand corner. It should be easier for us to find. Um, and then down in this model tab, since we have a, a single body part, um, it, it selects it by default. If we were to have a bunch of parts in here, we would need to come in here and select which parts we plan on machining. Um, that's the work coordinate system. Uh, we look pretty good there. So we'll move over to defining the stock. In the, in the stock definition tab, we can use um, a fixed size or a relative size uh, box or generally the most common. Um, but we have a whole range of options here. I'm going to go ahead and use the relative size box. Um, and by default, it's adding um, 0.04 inch of material on the perimeter and 0.04 inch material to the top. I'm going to change that to zero since our true material size will be um, the same size as our coaster on the top. Um, and on the on the side offset, I'm going to leave it the default 0.04 for now. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. Now, if we need to make changes to this uh, setup, we can right click on it and select Edit, and we can change any of the any of the parameters that we need to. Um, so the next thing to do will be to um, create tool paths. Uh, we'll start by machining this interior contour. I'm going to select a 2D toolpath, uh, 2D pocket. And we generally move from left to right through these upper um, tool parameter tabs. So I'm going to start with uh, the, the tool designation. I'll come down to tool and select. Um, now you probably don't have the 
our current tools and we'll need to um, make sure that the cloud um, folder is selected and then come up to import from libraries and we can bring in the previously downloaded tools file. Now from this tools file, we have um, six available tools. These tool numbers correspond to the slot that they're in at the Stepcraft machine. Um, so this uh, first operation, we're gonna use an eighth inch uh, flat end mill. I'm gonna select it and select okay. Um, now we need to define what is going to be machined with this tool. Um, I'm going to come down here and select this bottom face. Uh, we have the option in here to, to change our height settings. Um, the most common one to change is the bottom height. So if we don't want to machine all the way to the model surface, we can, uh, we can, do an, we can use an offset here or if we want to machine to a given um, stock point, we can, uh, we can use some of these selection tabs here. Uh, for this operation, we will not need to change that. So I'm gonna move on to the passes tab. Um, in the passes tab, the most commonly um, changed uh, setting here is the sideways compensation. compensation. For wood machining, we wanna, we wanna be a right hand or a conventional milling operation. And with pocket contours, by default, the stock to leave is always selected. So we're gonna go ahead and deselect that tab. And then we will also need to change for this very small pocket, this, this lead-in transition. So the lead-in is, is how it enters into the material. Um, at a 90 degree approach angle, it will, it will not have enough room to clear the, the edge of the pocket and it will start to cut into our part. So we'll change this to zero. It will be in line with the pocket. Bring this up and okay. So we have a nice clean tool path created. Um, I noticed I forgot something. So this is what it's showing here is it's coming down coming across, coming back, and it's doing it all in one single pass. Um, most likely that will break this router bit. It's a very small, fragile bit. So I'm gonna go back to my pocket. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna edit it, and I'm gonna go to passes and, chain, and select this multiple depths tab. Um, we can use the, uh, the default 0.04, um, that, should be, that should be fine. Um, select OK. And now we'll see that we have um, a series of passes going down into here, and that should be a more successful approach. OK, so now I'm going to create the tool path to cut this um, top surface here. So we're going to be using the 3D tool path. We have a whole host of options here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the morph spiral. If this part were deeper and had a larger draw to it, uh, we would probably have to use an adaptive clearing beforehand, and that just um, removes large chunks of excess material. Um, so this morph spiral is more of a finishing operation that you would run after the adaptive. Uh, we're not removing a huge amount of material, so I'm going to use the morph spiral. And instead of using the same um, eighth inch flat bit, I'm going to select a little bit beefier um, quarter inch ball bit. And that is this tool number four. We'll select it. The, uh, with, with um, 3D passes, the, the part um, is automatically recognized as the machine surface. Um, I know from doing this earlier that I want my tool to be outside the boundary. And I'm going to go ahead and select this avoid touch surfaces. Um, and I'm going to select these areas that were previously machined and the perimeter. Um, sometimes it'll have a tendency to try and machine that as well. And we're really just looking to machine this top surface here. 
We'll take a look at passes. The, the step over here um, is the biggest um, contributor to the quality of, the, of this operation. So with a 0.1 step over, we're gonna see the scallops and I'm gonna leave that alone and we'll see what it looks like in the simulation and we'll change it in a little bit. But I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And we have a nice morphed spiral tool path there. Uh, and then the last operation we're gonna do is to cut the perimeter of this part. I'm gonna use a 2D contour pass. And we'll change the bit one more time to be a quarter inch flat end mill. We'll select that. The, the profile we wanna follow is gonna be this outside circle profile. And in here, we are gonna change the height stab. So um, we want to be off of the bottom of the, of the table, so we're not cutting into the table. And then we'll trim away the excess later on uh, with a small hand router. So I wanna be a very small amount, 0 0.01 above the table. And that's gonna leave a very small skin around the outside. We'll take a look at passes here. Um, we wanna be the right-hand side and we wanna do multiple passes because again, we can't, um, we can't cut, do a full half inch cut in a single pass with, with this machine. Um, that all looks good. I'm gonna select okay. And uh, after making that tool path and, and and discussing raising the, the tool bit up, I realized that in my setup, um, I did not select the, the, the um, stock point that, I, that I'm actually gonna use. So I'm gonna, I went back into setup, right-clicked edit, and I'm gonna reselect the stock point to be at the bottom of the table. So when we're at the machine, we'll, we'll use the machine and, and tell it that that's our starting point. Um, it's a more accurate touch off than being on the top of the material. I'm gonna go ahead and select okay. And when I made changes to the setup, uh, Fusion is, is, one, is requesting that we regenerate all of these tool paths because they're no longer valid. So I can regenerate all by selecting the setup and then control G. And it takes a second to regenerate. Um, so now I wanna do a simulation so I can see what is going on. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna select my setup, actions and simulate. Uh, I'll just I'll play it and you can control the speed of the simulation here. You can fast forward here, slow it down here. Um, I can show or hide the tool paths. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the model. And we can see that by using that eighth inch step over, we're gonna have fairly large scallops all throughout. Um, and that may, that may be desirable. Um, it's certainly faster, but for this project, I'm going to decrease that. So I'm gonna go back into Morph Spiral, right click, edit. And in the Passes tab, instead of 0.125 inch step over, I'm gonna go with a 30 second, like 0 .3, 0 0.03 inch step over. Let that regenerate. And now we can simulate. So the simulation, um, it looks quite a bit more refined going with a smaller step over value. So I'm pretty happy with that. I will close out the simulation. I'm gonna show the model again. So this last step, uh, we will post out the these three operations to the machine. Um, we can select the setup and post the entire setup. So all the operations in the setup, or we can post out individual tool paths and run them in uh, standalone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and post out the entire setup. And before, when you come into the makerspace, um, 
the either I or one of the student technicians will check your programs before doing this next step, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how it works. Um, I select setup, actions, post process, and we'll need to find the step graft um, post. So you'll have your cloud library enabled. You come down to Fusion Library, and you can do a search for Stepcraft. And it brings up the UCC Stepcraft post. Select that. Um, we want to make sure that the Use Tool Changer option is selected. Um, in the program dialog box here, we can give it a name. Um, this is a card holder. We can give it a location. I'm just gonna put mine in the downloads for now. And it's pretty critical that this units selected is millimeters. Um, if we select inches, we're gonna have some issues. Uh, from there, we will post. And this will generate the operating G code for the, the, the um, Stepcraft CNC. And we'll upload this, um, this file into the, the physical CNC machine to, to run our part. Uh, so in the next video, we'll show you how to set up and run the Stepcraft machine. That concludes this tutorial.